Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about crochet, granny squares, my patterns and yarn. <laughs> so if you are brand new, hi, hello and welcome to the channel. It's lovely to have you here. And if you are returning, hey tribe, what's good, what's happening? I hope that you are all tickety boo no matter where you are in the world, that you've had some crochet moments and that you are ready to hear all the good stuff that I've got coming. I am in the UK, as you may well know, and lockdown is starting to lift here. So I'm hoping that that means more pub gardens, more crochet outside in the park and places like that, potentially cafes opening. Oh, just so, so excited. Um, We've been in lockdown since November 2020 and even before then we had quite a lot of heavy restrictions. Um, where I am, Leicester, hasn't really ever come out of lockdown. So, looking forward to that. I have got whips. I don't think I've got finished objects. But I've got whips and I've got incoming goodies. So let's get started, shall we? Um, whips. I have got like five whips on the go but I've got two here that I want to show you today first one's down here if you are a subscriber of the HDDC hub channel then you'll see me working on this because I'm on sleeve island and so whilst I was chatting I was getting it done and once I've done showing you everything I'm gonna return to this sleeve so this is a crochet cardigan it's called renewal one of my tribe stars, Cindy, she is one of my Patreons, thank you Cindy, um, you named this Renewal, it is a simple granny square cardigan, it's got granny stripe sleeves and it was originally joined in pink and I love pink, like you can see it all over the place, but I wear head to toe black and so I decided I was going to put this together with black, um, wasn't sure it would work with the pastels but actually it looks really good. So I've got the sleeves to do and then the button placket and then this one's finished. I've graded my size and I'm pretty sure the rest of them, I've got a good idea of how, how I'm gonna grade the others. So once that this is done, I will finish the grading, take photos and that will go out for testing. I'm hoping that it will be done soon. Um, I'm finding at the moment that I'm quite monogamous so I only want to focus on the one project. And yes, I've got two whips I'm showing you, but in my mind, get this one done, then move on. Because I just feel like I see more progress when I do that. Especially because as soon as it gets to the sleeves, I'm like, what's next? And both of these have been stored at the sleeves, which, ah, come on, get it done. So, uh, I have used granny squares in these pastel colours. I actually made a blanket out of these colours for Brad's step grandmother at Christmas and I liked them so much I knew I needed it to be. Originally I was going to do a jumper but I've got so many jumpers I really really need some cardigans in my wardrobe. So here we are. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds plus the joining colour, eight rounds in total. Um, Really quite a simple design but hugely effective it's really really pretty as i said i'm on the sleeves won't take long to do so that's renewal um that's using double knit acrylic yarn and a four millimeter hook and then i've got this one now this one is called all sorts and um, an Instagram follower named it because they said it looked like licorice all sorts. So if I can find your name, I'll put it on the screen below. But don't worry, I made a note of it somewhere because I'm going to gift you the pattern because you named it. So, this is all sorts. Now this is a chunky cardigan. I held two strands of double knit together and I used an 8 mil hook. So it's literally double the weight of Renewal. Um, these are three round granny squares with the joining round to make the fourth and again joined in black the sleeves um rather than granny stripe like renewal i've gone with um half treble or half double crochet depending on whether you use uk or 
English terms. Um, and it's just a really nice oversized chunky cardigan. I got this idea because I made the chunky revival. And again, I need more cardigans in my wardrobe and I keep being asked for cardigans. So I've done the sleeves. Um, the stitch markers show the decreases. I put a stitch marker on everyone so I just know at a glance where I am. Especially in black because it's so hard to see. <laughs> um, and it just needs its button placket finishing, can you see? And then that one will be finished as well and then that can be, be sent out to testers once I've tech edited it. It's got loads of Albi hair on it. Dang. Um, and then I'm also working on a few other whips as well. We've got, um, they're all like granny square basically. Yeah, they're all granny squares. Of various sizes and yarn. <laughs> um, so what do you reckon? Do you need a granny square cardigan or two in your life? Once these are done, I have another couple of cardigan patterns in mind um i'm going to say three maybe four so i'm going to work on them throughout the year and then i've also got other patterns that i have left languishing since last year that i want to pick up and get done i have sewn in most the ends on renewal um it's just these ones because i originally had it a lot shorter in the back I think it was just two granny squares in length and it was too cropped for what I wanted so I had to make some more um granny squares so that I could add to the length and do the front panels so yeah I hope that you like them because I'm really pleased with it so far I also started working on a hair scarf which I have put to one side whilst I focus on renewal. So who knows, I'm about to show you that next time as well. Um, I did show them everything I'm working on, all of my whips I show in my Inside HDDC vlogs and that's for my Patreon. So for as little as $2 a month, you can sign up and you can get the additional vlogs. They're supposed to be 10 minutes each, but I always end up recording like 20 minutes to half an hour so that means that if you are a tribe star of any level that you then get um four vlogs each month you get one every friday to announce the start of your weekend <laughs> it's become like a little um habit now hasn't it that i'm always like it's the weekend tribe stars yay so i did show their hair scarf within that um but i'm not going to dig it all out right now I'm going to show you more of that next month. So, that's my whips. In terms of finished objects, I haven't got any, but I am releasing a pattern within April. So let me grab that for you. This is example. It is a stash busting jumper. I used a strand of black yarn four ply yarn fingering weight if you're in american terms and then i also use double knit scraps um and it worked out really really quick and then it's got this contrasting seam which i absolutely love and yeah so so good absolutely love it and that is currently it's the test is now finished and that will be available for sale from the 24th of April alongside the workbook, um, which I'll go into detail on in a minute. So that is going to be coming out. So if you've got scraps or even if you've got like skeins like that, but they don't really go with anything, you can then um, make your own yarn ball that looks colourful like this. So that is coming as well. That is called Example. Um, if you head over to my Instagram, then you will be able to see pictures that I've reposted of the testers and things like that. So really, really cool. Um, there should be a story highlight as well for you to see everything. 
Then the other finished objects I showed you last month were the two different versions of Revival. So I've got the cow neck, I've got the crew neck and I've got the chunky version. I'm still in the process of writing up those variations. When they're ready, that will be a free additional download for whoever's got the pattern. Um, and I'm going to try my very best to email everybody that's already purchased it with the updated copy as well. Um, but if not, it'll be available for free on my website as soon as I have finished that so that you can make your own crew neck or your own chunky version. So that's also in the works. Um, I've got some incoming goodies to show you and I've also got quite a few updates. So let's talk updates and whilst I do, I'm going to add to this sleeve because it will help me get it finished. <laughs> um... There's been so, so much. I have done an entire vlog for the Hub channel um, because there has been so, so much going on that I needed to do an update over there as well. So for anybody that's not aware, I have the HDDC channel and I also have the Hub channel. So HDDC is for my tribe, it's for people that want to make my patterns, it's for you that love to crochet. And then the Hub is for um, anybody that wants to build income streams from their crochet, whether it's crochet design, whatever else it might be. I have started by teaching how to um, turn your designs into patterns so that you can publish them and I decided to create a second channel for that so that um, I could keep the two separated. Because not everybody wants to make their crochet into a business you know, is a hobby first and foremost, so I totally understand that. So I created the second um, channel, second Instagram account and everything for The Hub. And there has been so, so much within that. So as a little backstory, I started making my own patterns and designing and then I was asked to release the patterns. So I learned how to do that and I released the patterns. And then I started getting questions on how I'd learned to do that. So I have now started to teach people. I was going to create a handbook, which was like a one stop for everything, but quickly realized that it would be like thousands of pages. So instead I've split that down into workbooks and the first workbook is already available. Um, the pre-orders will have opened and then by the end of April, you'll be able to purchase it on general release. And that teaches you how to put your design ideas together and then how to size grade that, which is to apply standard measurements within a spreadsheet um, so that you can transform your design into sizes from extra small to five extra large. And within the workbook, I do a step-by-step -step going through the design process. Um, I actually designed example, um, as an example, that's where it got its name from. And then from there, I size graded it in step-by-step -step format, loads of screenshots for you. And um, so you can see all the formulas and everything within the workbook. And so I then decided to release the pattern as well because so many members of my tribe wanted it. And it's a great pattern. And I've done all the work and more to get that graded. So that's been tech edited, tested, and that will be available alongside the workbook. If you buy the workbook, you get the pattern for free anyway. And if you don't want the workbook, you can purchase the pattern by itself. Um, so throughout March, I've really been focusing on the workbooks and getting them, getting that first workbook out there. It's been tested. Testing is still ongoing for some people. Um, I've got a vlog coming out that talks about how long it takes to get a pattern from design to published and the testers are just testament to that 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 really differs for each person and um, so there'll be a whole lot more about that in that vlog but safe to say that between having the workbook tested the pattern tested getting the sales page ready, setting up the affiliate links, all of that stuff. It's been like so, so much. It's been great. I've absolutely loved it. It's also been a lot. And so I've gone into a lot more detail about what it's been like being a crochet designer on the Hub channel. Um, so if you're interested in that, then I definitely recommend you go check that out. 
I also put vlogs up on there about um, my definitions of success and how to pick your own money mindset. I've also done a vlog that shows how much I made from my first pattern, which was called Revival. So I've shown how much I made an in income from sales of that pattern from August when I released it to December 2020. Um, I've shown like actual figures, screenshots from um, the platforms, the whole shebang, so that you can have an insight into what to expect and the possibilities available. So I have put a lot of my focus into the hub side of things. I haven't been crocheting as much because I, because everything I crochet is one of my own designs because I've spent all day doing screen work then I haven't necessarily wanted to then grade the next section of the pattern such as the sleeves so that I can then just get on and do it and also sleeves I don't I don't I'm not always enjoying sleeves <laughs> um so there hasn't been as much crochet as perhaps I would like but in other areas I have really seen I've just made so much progress. Um, as I said, I put the affiliate link scheme in place. Um, so the workbook testers are the first ones to become affiliates of the hub. And that means that once you've purchased the workbook, you can apply to be an affiliate. There is some eligibility criteria, but it's basically that your Instagram profile um, is public. That's pretty much it. And that you don't post on like, Groupon and things like that. Other than that, um, it's pretty open and it means that if somebody clicks your link then you get 8% of the sale. So if it was £100 then you would get £8 which is then another income stream. Um, so I set all of that up as well. It's been a huge learning curve but hugely rewarding. Really, really good. Um, and as I said, it's my second month as a crochet designer, full-time crochet designer. It's flown by. Um, I've been making a lot more of an effort in terms of self-care, wellness, taking care of my mind. Um, I have been journaling every day. I think since the 28th of February, I've journaled every single day. So it's well over 30 days now. It's the 1st of April today, so 28, 29, 30, 31. Yeah. I don't know how many days it is. I'm not even going to pretend that I just figured that out, but it's a lot. <laughs> Normally, I, I would journal every other day or once a week, but I've made the commitment to journal every day. And I sort of do a mind cleanse, so I just write down everything that's on my mind, um, whether that's Albie needs to go to the vets or he doesn't blah 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 you know those sorts of things um we need more milk I don't drink milk but <laughs> you get the gist and um it's just what came to my mind and then I then write everything that I'm grateful for which is really powerful because every day there's something to be grateful for and then I'll probably write whatever it is I'm working towards or ideas that are in my mind so yeah journaling every day, taking my vitamins, if I need a nap, which today is a nap day, I'm going to take a nap, um, spending more time in the garden, you know I love my garden, oh my goodness I love my garden, um, and now that I live with Brad, it's a different garden, but I did help with him with it last year, and we did put some raised beds in so that we could grow vegetables, we've actually had a picket fence put around that, to stop Albie, my pony, my puppy, who is the size of a pony, getting into it. Um, because he was like wanting to dig and pulling at plants and he's only four months old, so he's still got a lot of learning to do. It also then sections it off and it looks really, really neat. And then I decided I wanted to paint the fence and we had like a two day heat wave this week. It's really bizarre because the UK had like 20, 21 degrees for two days, but then at the weekend we're due to have snow. What are we doing to the world? What are we doing to the world? Um, decided to paint the fence and I picked black, which proved to be really controversial because I had the amount of people that were like, oh no, it'll be too dark, it will feel enclosed, like the upkeep, blah, blah, blah. 
and I was like I'm doing it black and I said to Brad I want it black I'm adamant I know it's gonna look good and he was like whatever like I don't really like painting but if that's what you want so we got the paint painted a panel and then I was like oh no what have I done what if this isn't right blah 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 and then I was like well I've committed now so I've got to make it look good um we have quite a long garden a lot of fence to cover so Brad actually ended up taking a second trip back to B&Q to get a spray gum to speed up the process and then we ended up taking a third trip to go and get even more paint because the fence was just so thirsty so I've done the first coat on the majority of it and I'm hoping this afternoon to put the second coat on the rest of it it just depends because it's quite windy which is not great for the spray gun and it was threatening rain and if it's going to rain then there's no point me painting um but I'd like to get that done whilst Albie is out because he did get a little bit of paint on him because he thought he was helping but he wasn't helping um because it looks really really good I'm so pleased with it and then the picket fence the shed and the decking when we get it is going to go a lighter shade I'm 90% sure that I want it to be a shade that's called stone within the Ron seal range if you, if you know your shades go have a look um or a grey originally I thought grey and then I saw the stone and I'm pretty sure I want that one but I think we're going to get sample pots just so I can see um yeah and then the shed that's there we are going to paint it because it's a random color at the moment it used to match the kitchen um the previous owners had the shed in the kitchen matchy matchy it looked nice but the kitchen's now a different color anyway um part of it because brad painted half and ran out of paint and then obviously that shade's not within our color scheme so i'm going to paint that for now but eventually i'm going to get a shed out there that is the hddc hq um but i just want it to look good even if that shed's only there a month i've I've got to i've got to paint it so um brad also has to move that so that i can get to the fence panel behind the shed as well because it's still like the very bright auburn colored wood um so yeah, spending a lot more time on wellness, taking care of myself. And it's good. It feels good. Um, like yesterday, the sun was shining. So I spent the day outside crocheting and I was still working, still making money. And then today it's a bit more dreary and I do feel tired. So once I finish recording this, I'm going to take a nap. And yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Sign-ups for the workbook have gone really, really well. As of the time of recording, I've had 26 I've had 26 pre-orders, which thank you to each and every one of you. I'm so, so grateful. I created a welcome board with everybody's names on, which I'm looking at now. <sighs> I just love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you is that HGDC was featured in a magazine so it's the inside crochet magazine it is issue 133 Can you see that and on page seven is me it says big plans for hg designs crochet um and I'm not going to read it all out because you need to go get the magazine. But they asked me a few questions and I said, I knew early on when I learned to crochet that one day it would become my day job. I just didn't know how to achieve it. Um, and then I've gone through a little bit of the history. Just three months, just three patterns later, I decided to go full time. I've got loads of plans. I've got a bumper backlog of patterns to release. I've got my new workbook um and also there's the hub as well so it's really cool to see me in there and you lot loved it i made a reel i made a tiktok about it i posted it to reels and you all absolutely loved it um i've spent quite a bit of time on tiktok i wanted to give it a go i love just creating stories and it's a way to just create like a 30 second story um 
I'm not doing as well on actual TikTok, but Instagram, when I post them on there, I love it. it so, uh, I might pledge like a 30 day challenge to myself to post on TikTok every day and just see how I get on from there. <laughs> see what the growth is. And then I might post those results on the hub. Um, so yeah, that's all the chatter. It's, there's been a lot going on, not necessarily as much crochet as perhaps I would like. But now that things have, I really feel like I've got my routine. Um, Albie, my pony, he's really growing up fast and he's huge. He's absolutely huge. He responds to pony as well, which, but I do call him that a lot. Um, his manners are really coming on. He's enjoying his walks a lot more. He absolutely loves his daycare. He's soon to be going there twice a week so that I've got a bit more time to focus on HDDC and the hub. Yeah, just, I'm happy. I'm happy. And it's nice to be able to say that to you. Incoming goodies. <laughs> I actually spent quite a lot of March um, paring down my stash. My thought process was that if I hang on to stuff that isn't meant for me then I won't have the space for what is meant for me so I actually donated a lot of yarn to one of my friends at church um what you see here is still a huge stash but I had even more because a lot of it spilled onto the um storage cabinet I can't point that way <laughs> um and I, I just had so much of it and because at my previous home i had a whole huge room it was the master bedroom of the house that was for like my yarn and craft storage to then now be in the smaller bedroom in our shared home and this is smaller than my small bedroom in my previous home i just really needed to let a lot of it go um and so i actually reached out in a group that i'm part of and just asked if anybody local um would take some of the old whips off my hands. So my big blankets that I haven't finished are gone. I gifted a load of yarn. Just, I knew I was never gonna go back to them. I was never gonna work on them. And they were just sat there. I felt guilty and they were taking up space. So I'd given them to somebody else. There was an elderly lady in the local area. Um, I dropped them off with her daughter so that she could take them to her mom and her mom was gonna finish them off because we've been in lockdown since November. 2020 and she was just a bit bored and so I like the thought that that's given her something to do and that they're going to be finished and then after that I was like just gift them to a um, charity or a care home or whatever because I, I just don't need more blankets I want to make more so I don't have to keep them all um I then gifted two blankets to one of my previous next door neighbours because she works in a care home so that could go to the residents and then my friend at church, I filled up like, I'm going to say two of these huge tubs of yarn went to her and it completely filled the um, boot of her car, trunk of her car, like completely filled full of yarn. Um, she likes to, she's just learnt to knit, she crochets a little bit, she's at more like a beginner stage but she's made some really really nice stuff and I was like just have a play around with it if there's too much for you gift it to other people I know that she's been making like baby clothes and things like that so yeah um and it felt really good to do that just let it all go and so that when I walk in here it just it's not crammed um and I'm probably going to do the same again in about three to six months time because there's already yarn in there that I'm looking at and I'm like you're not going to use it, just let it go. So, I made space for new things to come in and then Claire and John, Claire of Bird Street Yarn, Mr B Yarn, she messaged me and said, we've got this yarn, it's end of line, um, will you put it to use? And I was like, yeah I will. So she sent me this huge, huge bag of yarn and I'm just going to go through and show some of it to you. You may know that I went to Nottingham Yarn Festival, not last November, the November before, and I actually met Claire and John there. I took my nanny with me, and when we went to her their stall, she had a funny turn, and she, I think she just got too hot and overexcited by all the yarn. So they actually got her a chair and a glass of water and helped me sort her out. 
And she bought four skeins of yarn from there, and I think I bought two. Yeah. Um, and I bought two that were Jack Daniels influenced. And my nanny bought some that she really liked. And she was like, oh, I just love their yarn. I want to get more. And I was kind of like holding her back, like, nanny, you, you've got enough yarn, chill. Um, but she said to me, it's all right, we'll come back next year and I'll get some more. And then obviously we're mid-pandemic and that hasn't happened. Um, but they sent me some yarn. So I said that I would split it with my nanny because I know she loves their yarn so, so much. So let me show you what we've got and then how we're going to split it. So we got, um, and it's all on that Aran weight, and I think they're no longer holding this base. That's why it came to me. So this is called Jasper, and it's actually part of the Jack Daniels line. I got, um, I can't remember the name of the two I got, but hang on. I got this four ply. I got this four ply. It's called Sugar and Maple, and it's from the Jack Daniels range. I just I love the colours. It's going to be socks at some point. Um, so they're both the Jack Daniels range. This one is called Jasper and it's like really autumnal. Really, really nice. And they sent us two of those. Um, let's clear a bit of space. And then we were also sent two of these. I think it's called Mutadine. And that's a lot more pumpkin-y, a lot more bright orange, um, fresh leaves that have just fallen. So there's two of those. And then there's two of these and it's called Slate. I'm pretty sure you can get these colorways, but like on different bases. Um, I think, I'll check that. We've got two of these. It's showing up a little bit more blue, but it's actually like a gray. Um, we also got two of these and they are called Asparagus. And it's like a really nice pea green, quite light green. also received three of these it's called sprout i absolutely love that green it's one of the ones i'm keeping so there's three of them because they're 100 grams each that means there's 300 grams of that actually there's four of them there's 400 grams of that which means there's enough there for me to get a jumper out of and then we also got two of these, which is a lighter grey. It's not named, um, but they, you can see it's quite pale and it's got the darker bits. And in contrast to the darker grey. So, there was one more. And then I also got this, which, oh, I love it. This is called Ray and it is a beautiful sun, sunshine yellow. So I am keeping Ray, I'm keeping Sprout, and I'm keeping the Slate. So if I hold one of each of those for you. I'm keeping these three. So I've got 400 grams of that, 200 of that, 200 of that. Um, I have got a few ideas in mind. I'm really tempted to make a really nice Aran jumper out of the green. Um, green's not a colour I normally wear, but I just think it's gorgeous. Or maybe like a cropped cardigan because I can really see me like sitting in the garden, enjoying the greenery, wearing green, especially in the evening when it gets a bit chilly or maybe like popping down to the allotment. Just, it's so cute. Um, and then my nanny is going to be having Jasper. She's got three of those, two of these, two of these, and two of these so she's not seen the colors she's not entirely sure what she's going to make because she hasn't seen them but i think she was on about potentially getting a um neutral color 
and making some sort of jumper or cardigan out of it. Um, but again, I'm going to let her see them before she makes her mind up. But I absolutely love all of the colours. I made a reel on them as well. I just... That yellow. I really, really love it. That is going to feature in some sort of design where it's seamed together in yellow and it's got little pops of the colour. I know that for sure. So... I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to Claire and John for sending that to me because I can't wait to get started. Um, my nanny asked me to hold on to her yarn until it gets a bit warmer because now lockdown's starting to lift. Once the weather's nice, I can go and spend the afternoon in her garden, take the yarn over, see what she's up to. I think she's got some yarn for me because she, we both purchased the same yarn and she said she doesn't want to keep it. It's actually, you see that tub full of pink and there's a colour squished a bit below it? It's that one. It's like a tweed. So she said I could have that. So we're going to take them. She can work out what she wants to make. I was tempted to make a blanket, but it's just too good to make into granny squares because... And yeah, I want to wear it. I want to wear it, so... Um, I'm thinking like a cropped cardigan in that so nice so a huge thank you for that yarn i really really appreciate it i was already a fan of the yarn anyway as i said i've got two skeins i've got this and another one that i started socks with and to then get a huge package of it arrive it was also vacuum packed as well when it arrived and i was like huh and then when i opened it up and it all sprang up i was like yarn um thank you so so much AK Tribe, that is everything for March in review. I have got lots of whips to go and get on with and some design plans coming to mind as well. I hope that you've enjoyed watching. Give it a big thumbs up. Um, comment below with your favourite shade of yarn that you like and I will see you in the next one. Bye.